Oh, that's a big accident for Kubica. Oh, no! Mark Webber's gone right up there. They're going to stop the race, no doubt about that at all. Oh, no! Mark Webber's gone right up there. Oh, Mark Webber has gone completely over the top there of Heike Kobalainen. Thankfully, he's all right. He's thrown out his steering wheel. What an impact that was. Uh, as if, it's uh, as if Mark thought he was going to pull to the left of Kovalainen. And Kovalainen started to get out of his way. Just a misunderstanding there. And uh, clearly, uh, Mark caught him at uh, vast rate of knots, quicker than he probably anticipated. And all credit to the design of the car and the regulations. I was very uh, happy to walk away from it, to be honest, because um, you know when you have people like Jackie Stewart ring you up, and um, you know, you know, you just think, oh, back to those guys' days. Obviously, uh, it would have been a different outcome. Of course, I wouldn't have walked away at all. So uh, I know how lucky I am, and um, yeah, I'm fine, and I'll be I'm fully ready to go for the weekend. Oh, De Cesare is sideways. De Cesare is on the grass. He's going over. Oh, De Cesare, a major accident, and I think he's he's all right. He's getting out. Andrea De Cesare is getting out of the wrecked remains. He got it on the wet grass. The car went sideways. The rear wheel dug in, and it was launched. The big talking point was Luciano Berti's first lap aerobatics. He had no chance to avoid Schumacher's Ferrari, which launched him into a frightening barrel roll. Feels a little bit like slow motion, because I saw him, I, then I remember looking to the sky, because of course the car was flying. I remember a little bit when I was upside down, and then I saw the barrier coming, I knew that was going to crash again, so I took my hands off the steering. It's not a very quick uh, reaction that you get. Oh, something's Ooh, off. Oh, that's a big crash as well. And that's the Sauber of Marcus Ericsson. There, there was absolutely nothing he could do. The car just went under braking, just stepped out from underneath him. To be able to walk away from it and, and feel fully fit to, to, to drive today, you know, it's, it's quite incredible. So it says quite a lot about F1 at the moment and the safety. Wow, that's one of the Jordans. This is what we feared at this corner, and that looks very nasty indeed. Red flag has gone out. It's Martin Brundle, and miracle of miracles. This is well nigh unbelievable. Martin Brundle gets out of the car, and he is seemingly all right. Oh, we got a car upside down. That is an MF1. Yeah, Albers, you see rolling the car. He should be OK in that, although you never want to roll over into the gravel trap. I didn't see it coming, you know, it just started to roll over and uh, that, was, that was it. And I have to say the impact was quite OK, you know, it was, was not really hard and, you know, we can see how safety Formula One is now in this moment. Patrick Tombe tries to take seventh place from Martin Brundle. His car rolls into the barriers. Miraculously, Tombe emerges unhurt. Tombe rides over the rear wheel, turns over, bounces off the tyre barrier, and lands, fortunately, back on its wheels again. And it's locking up in a crash, and Fernando Alonso goes over the top there of Charles Leclerc's Sauber, also involved Nico Hülkenberg in the Renault. It was an innocent bystander in that. Uh, was Fernando Alonso. He gets a thump now and uh, spun around and cleared Look at this mess that's made of the side of that McLaren. What we're about to see is Hulkenberg get too deep on the brakes, locked up and boom. Wow, just could not stop in time. I think on the positive side, we are all fine, uh, especially Charles that I flew over uh, his car. And uh, yeah, the halo today was a, a very good thing to, to have. Oh, that's a big accident for uh, Kubica and a uh, horrible accident going on there. He's moving his hands and uh, obviously safety car will be out again. 
Oh yes, he's had an accident very early on. And that, that was at maximum velocity. That, I've never seen a car crash like that uh, in this circuit at that place. It's the Toyota he connected with. He took off. Oh yes, and, and head first into So nearly collected the Toro Rosso of Scott Speed that you would have thought in any normal circumstances would have been well out of the action. And that was a huge impact. Have you seen the accident on TV? Well, yeah, I, I have seen it also live when I was there, but... Uh... Major contact between Rosberg and Carter Cairn. Rosberg arriving at huge speed and then going over the top. Yeah, Carter Cairn was in the middle of blowing up. And lucky that thing ended up rubber side down. And you can just see the smoke beginning to come out. We think, uh, I'm pretty sure, it didn't hit him on the head. Both drivers OK, which is great to see. Schumacher has passed Nico Hakkinen already. Oh. And he's going for the lead and off goes on. Now they're going to stop the race, no doubt about that at all. Lewis is Benetton on cartwheels across the gravel trap. He's harpooned by Jarno Trulli's Prost. Yeah, poor old Jean Lazy, he was sandwiched a bit there, he couldn't go right. Montoya's going to tag the back of his teammate, put him into a spin, he collects Heidfeld, Heidfeld goes rolling, Button spins around, and uh, Scott Speed gets caught up in the aftermath, actually tagging both McLarens. Heidfeld goes spinning, Scott Speed for Toro Rosso goes half flying. I was never concerned about Heidfeld. I was pretty sure that he was going to walk right away from it because it was not such high speed. Uh, I was mostly concerned about where the other cars were going and eventually they ended up going where I was, so that's why we crashed. Oh! Yeah. So, it was not a car failure. Well, that all looks a bit familiar to me, to be honest. Just, and then it dug in twice into the gravel. So he's gone to switch sides as Gutierrez is slowing down. It's caught him out a little bit. So Petrov, podium man. Oh, you can't do that. Steering column has actually broken, Look Martin. Look at that. Steering has come off in his hands. It's still connected to the front, but the actual support. Yeah, but is it any surprise? Look at this thing. He's just going to take off. Whoa. Patrese challenging Gerhard Berger for third place. He does make the McLaren look very wide indeed. Oh, tragedy there as Patrese hits the rear wheel of the McLaren. Berger was coming into the pits anyway, I think. And Patrese, he'll be very shaken indeed after an accident of that intensity. Christian Finipaldi with that wheel off. My goodness, a dramatic finish in Italy as, oh, I didn't see that. That is Fittipaldi. Yes, that was Fittipaldi there. He tried to come up, he tried to overtake Martini. He just touches, look at the car, goes up through the vertical, absolutely over a complete 360 degree somersault. What you're going to see is Rubens moved over to the right-hand side of the grid and started to decelerate for turn one and just completely caught Ralph out. Ralph clearly nowhere near the, uh, getting on the brakes and just reared straight up the back. Here we see it then, onboard Ralph and just connects, look. And uh, oh, so nearly that flipped over backwards. Rubens changed the direction twice too much and that was the main problem about it. Um, I mean, uh, he was braking a bit, a fraction too early, but that is down to his decision when to brake. I don't want to say anything about that. You know, it's it's another racing incident. You never, I mean, I'm sure he didn't do it on purpose. He just tried to defend his position without thinking what he was doing. is the Renault of Hulkenberg going over and over and over and out of this race. And that is Nico Hulkenberg against the barrier being punted off the track. And that is a worrying accident to see at the start of this race. I'm hanging here like a cow. 
Damon Hill had a scary moment in practice for the Portuguese Grand Prix when an out-of-control Eddie Irvine sent him flying. The Jordan was running in front when he got a wheel on the grass, losing his car and spinning into the path of the unfortunate Brit. A bizarre incident, but fortunately, both drivers were unharmed. Oh, enormous shunt for Timo Glock in the Toyota. That's certain to bring out the safety car again. There is debris all over the track, and Timo Glock on his first run for Toyota has gone off in the most massive way. Safety car deployed. I suspect it's the exit of turn 12, isn't it? The fast chicane where he's dropped the Toyota, probably 140, 150 miles an hour. 